morning. Hey, hey. Welcome to Ramona the Airstream, episode number two. We are coming to you live from uh, Loveland, Colorado. Um, beautiful day. Last week we were here and it was cold with ice everywhere. For the moment, Colorado's pretending that it's spring. We'll see how that goes. Probably snow some more, but for now, sunny. We're here from Colorado. Um, we have done a lot since episode one. If you joined us last week, we gave you, he's done a lot. I haven't really done a lot. Um, we, last time we showed you our before tour of our Airstream and her, all of her 1973 original glory of browns and golds and loveliness. And um, it looks quite different now. So we're gonna bring you inside. We're gonna show you what we've done and um, talk a little bit about what we do next. Yeah. One thing we didn't realize is I think this was the most that you saw of the outside of the Airstream. So I think before we go inside, we'll just do a quick spin around the outside so you can kind of get a, a full view of what she looks like. Okay. Well, you talk about it. I'll hold it. All right. Are you holding? I guess. Cool. Um, yeah, so this is what it looks like. All right, now it's going to say. No. I know. What are you touring? <laughs> Um, yeah, so let's just do a spin around. You know. So she came with a solar panel up top. Um, that is not going to be enough solar to uh, keep us powered off of grid. So we'll be adding four of those. That one, probably about twice the size of that one. So the top will be covered in some panels, and that way we can have power wherever we go. Yeah, we should probably note on that. We can talk more about it later, but... Um our traveling style we have um no little to no interest in campsites and campgrounds and being right up next to people like when we go out we want to be like just us and nature and we have a big dog and children that want to run and that want to play and we're not plugging into somebody's campsite so everything that we're going to do with our remodels is going to um, be with the intention of being like sustainable and off-grid as possible. So we're gonna need all the solar so that we can be powered up without plugging in. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we've got one, not enough. So there's the back there, pretty neat little bumper. Scrape that bad boy coming out of the driveway a few times. Learning curves. Oh yeah. Learning how to drive, that's one nice step. The outside, so for the most part, it's in pretty decent condition. Um, and be completely honest some of this stuff makes me nervous like all this peeled stuff how to clean all this junk up no big deal it'll be fine it's it'll fine. be fine she says it'll be fine. apparently she posted in an airstream group and they said it's not as big of a deal as we think so a uh, little awning up there kind of funny story when we were in Yellowstone I was setting that thing up and it had been raining all night long you don't want laughing over there I was uh, setting it up and it was like you know, what, seven, seven in the morning, freezing cold out, probably 20 degrees. Um, well, I guess it warm enough that there was water. I guess it had the snow and rain, it was cold. And whatever, it was freezing. Yeah. And as I'm setting it up, I pull that thing out and I was like, well, let's put it at an angle, you know, and that way, uh, if while it's raining, the water would just slide off and not just accumulate up there. Well, turns out, it had been accumulating up there already. So when I turn that thing down at an angle, literally I just get whoosh, like just like dumped probably. of ice water oh, on Oh yeah, ice. probably like six or seven gallons of ice water just rushed right down my face in my shirt. 7.30 in the morning, it was, it was uh, lovely. So anyway, you know, let's keep going around here. I think it's really important to live life in gratitude. And I am so thankful that I witnessed that situation that I saw yeah. the water pour on his face. Yeah, I'm sure I she was very thankful for that. Face, it's one of my highest moments. Yeah, highest <laughs> moments. So it was great. To, I loved it. it. Loved it. So this is what she looks like on the outside. I like the front there with the big black window. It's, uh, it's actually to protect the window from rocks kicking up from your truck. The other side, we have to get rid of that little. Uh, white door and get get another chrome one back in there. I don't know what they were thinking. Obviously need another hubcap back there. 
I'm gonna swap those out too. I don't like those. I don't notice hubcaps. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe those big round chrome shiny ones or something. All right, let's show let's you head what we've inside. Done. Why don't you head inside first, Tom? Tom has been working so hard. So hopefully you saw last week so you can see how drastically different it is. You ready? Ready? Oh, we've been doing stuff. Okay, here we go. It's gone. All the things, all the things you saw last week are not even there anymore. We took them out. Yeah. So I say we, like, we, hold on. We're not even in here. This is a video of my shirt. Let me come over here. Mm. Um, so I say we, but really we means I helped for like, what, 20 minutes? I helped for 20 minutes, 20 minutes yeah. um, and then I had stuff to do, so I left, and thankfully Tom, he really loves me, but like close second is power tools. He loves projects and power tools almost as much as he loves me, so he got to spend his weekend uh, using them, and you want to talk about that? You want to talk about all the things you did? Um, yeah, so it was pretty interesting. I. Um... I don't know what Airstream's fascination is with rivets, but it seems to be that this almost this entire thing was held together with rivets. Um, you basically just got to drill them out. So that was interesting, learning how they all get stuck in your drill bit and pulling them off. And got my gloves twisted up in the drill a few times. Um, but anyway, yeah, just started in, in one section and just started making my way all the way down the side, pulling off one thing at a time. Uh, first, when I came in here, I was like, oh my gosh, where do I start? Where do I begin? And Delmar says, just find a screw and take it out. So that's, that's what I did. Just one screw at a time. Every time I saw a screw or a rivet, we started pulling it out. Yeah. And um, yeah, we got just about everything out. There were definitely some surprises that uh, we came about, like rotted floors and wet wood. Uh, which we suspected, you know, there were a couple leaks that we've already seen and in fact one morning While we were in Yellowstone camping, we woke up to rain inside the Airstream uh, That was lovely and so we had like three or four different little cups set up set out across the floor uh, And then it was dripping on us as we were sleeping. So then I like duct taped up this uh, piece of cardboard <laughs> on the ceiling and angle that thing so that way it would the water would run down and drip into the cup. So I liked I thought that that was funny because for Tom it felt like that was like this new experience in Tom's life. I Tom's from a very nice family. I grew up in a trailer park and it was a <laughs> old like an old we had an old like 70 something trailer and in so many ways like that trailer reminds me of the airstream. I mean it was like a regular mobile home not you know an airstream but just so many of those like 70 decor kinds of things and I remember it would rain like Arizona monsoon season and we just like we had buckets and pans <laughs> we pulled the buckets and the pans and we put them all around the house and all the leaky spots and that that was just like such this normal thing to do and I hadn't thought about it in so long until our airstream started raining on us in the middle of the night and I was like oh that's fine you just get like the pot and you stick it over here um but really that's not fine so that's going to be one of our next projects is there's um there's a lot of damage because it's been leaking this is an old trailer and it's been rained and it's been leaking and that causes problems so before we really refinish anything we need to do those repairs so that anything new that we're doing isn't going to be damaged so um That'll be next. Finding those leaks, fixing them, and then fixing the damage on like the subfloor and the parts that stay before we replace anything new. Yeah. Yeah, you can't quite see it here, but just down below here is one of the main water lines that runs to the, uh, I think that's a hot water heater over there, and then up into the sink and whatnot. And there is a very large bubble and blown out crack in the water line uh, as well as you know you could see some residue where water had been running out of that so 
uh, and some rotted wood below, so that's lovely. But yeah, I think before we get to the leak, obviously, we got all this paneling. All You see all this white you know, paneling in the interior? That's all got to come out. That's a whole lot of rivets to drill out. Um, where we're going to put that, I don't know. Apparently in my garage, uh, which I don't love. But we'll, we'll show you that here in just a moment, too, because... Well, I do, oh, sorry, go ahead. I do like the project and build things, and I've, I've got some shelves drawing in there right now, actually, that we were just staining last night for the kitchen. But um, my garage is jam-packed with all the stuff that used to be in the Airstream that we're going to be selling, so we need to get that out so we can get all this paneling yeah. in there. We've been very mindful of... So we... When people get these trailers, they do one of two things. Some people restore it and keep it as original as possible and some people renovate it where you're completely making everything renewed and um we talked about this a little bit last time but i do really like the original stuff and kind of that old vintage style for one tom doesn't but for two it just it wasn't going to be practical for this trailer and for our family like for one we need to um, just change like the layout and the sleeping situations in order to um, fit our family. Um, things like the damage to the floor, like probably old, possibly molded, like insulation, like redoing um, the piping and the gas. There's a lot of reasons why everything had to come out. So if everything's gonna have to come out, we'd rather not put the same stuff back in, but redo it in our way. And I wanted to address that because we have had a lot of comments of people like, why would you tear up such a nice trailer? Like it's in such good condition and it is kind of hard to find these old trailers still in their original form. Um, but there's just too much repair on this trailer and it wasn't gonna work for our family. So anyway, but that said, um, I'm really, really big on like, let's not fill the landfill with a bunch of our trash like I've got big issues with trash and um, we're not filling the landfill with our project and I do really appreciate that a lot of people do restore their airstreams um, to their original form so everything we took out we tried to do it as mindfully and carefully as possible and not break any of the things um, and we have all of the things saved so they're not going in the truck to the landfill they're going to other Airstream owners in hopes of them using them for their project. And I've really been surprised how much um, of a need there is for that. Like I posted all the before pictures in like our Airstream groups and people are like, oh, I need that light or I need that, you know, connector or I need that door or I need that mirror and just keeping everything original. So anyway, all that is in the garage. We got to get rid of it so that we can yes, have we space do. for, Tom would probably take it to the landfill oh, if. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't get it out of here soon enough. It's probably where it's gonna end up. So if lie. anybody sees this video and needs their stream part, help us clean the garage. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so we'll get that out, and then the next step is gonna be to um, remove all these panels so that we can find and address the leaks. Yeah, I mean, pulling out the panels. There's there's insulation behind this which we're replacing, uh, but that's one of those other things that kind of makes me a little nervous. You know, with all the water leaking in there, I'm kind of curious if there's any mold growing in those uh, insulation bats. So there probably is. Hopefully not. But yeah, it's kind of a thing. Um, so that all said, one thing I, I just kind of want to talk about our vision for this <clears throat> with rebuilding it is we want to use as many um, like recycled materials. Um, as many just sustainable, eco-friendly type of materials. Really big on a hemp kick lately. Um, hemp, I think, is gonna has a potential to save the world in a whole lot of ways. And so, I would love to be able to put in as much hemp-based materials as possible. Uh, for one, hemp insulation. Like I think it, I was reading that like an inch thick of hemp insulation is the equivalent. Uh, insulation value as like eight inches of standard uh, insulation so that's that's pretty rad it's also anti um, anti mold anti microbial like it freshens the air um, it dampens noise a lot better like so much better in so many ways barely you know fairly new though right because hemp's been banned for quite some time so uh, they're also just 
now creating some of the first hemp wood and hemp flooring. So that would be pretty rad. Yeah, we would love, we'll see how it all um, works out, but our vision, I don't know if anybody else has done it. I haven't really um, fully researched that, but I do follow a lot of like Airstream groups and forums and Instagrams and I don't know that I've really seen anything. So we would love if we could do our Airstream like one of the first like it can't be fully hemp because there's not all of those building totally. materials, but like as much hemp product um, and sustainable product as possible. So if anybody knows, if anybody that is watching like knows of any um, what like companies, materials, yeah, yeah, resources, say, connections. Yeah, like, if you know anybody know. like personally, right, that you could connect us with, that would be awesome. Um, if you know of any companies, put them down below in the comments or message them to us. I think the comments would be even better and that way everybody can see that, right? And you may be doing some of your own projects and would love that as well. Um, yeah, if you've heard of any companies, any resources you could point us to would be awesome. It doesn't necessarily have to be hemp based, but um, you know, any kind of eco-friendly, sustainable type of stuff. We're also looking for, uh, you know, I think it'd be really cool to spon get sponsors for those types of things as well. So if you are a company or you know somebody, uh, we would love to feature you here on the show and uh, be able to give you that shout out and to uh, feature your products. We're also in the, in the midst of completing a website for RamonaTheAirstream.com, which will feature all of those various vendors on there. Um, our first show already has gotten, I don't know, oh, oh, well over a thousand different views or something. So, 27,000. Yeah, 2,700 views, right? And, and just a, and that was within a matter of a handful of days. So, um, anyway, that all said, we'd love to, uh, love to do it that way. So, that'd be cool and get as much, yeah. much collaboration community stuff in here as possible. I think it'd be rad. So, you want to show everybody what you've found? Sure. And you're pulling things out? I think it's funny. This is going to be, I think, a common theme with about all of the projects that we do. Like, Tom's like, uh, we're doing this thing and I'm so afraid of what's underneath it. And what if it's like this? And what if it's like that? And I've seen all these horror stories. And what if it's rotten? And what if it's molded? And what if the animals ate it underneath? And I'm just like, that's fine. That's fine. We'll deal with that <laughs> when we, when we get to it. Yeah. And this poor man, like, makes himself a nervous wreck thinking about what's under the floorboard when he pulls it out. And, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous about that because I was just reading on uh, one of the Facebook groups the other day, this this uh, group of people that, that's what they do, they take in Airstreams and renovate them. And, uh, and the guy had some water stains on the floor and ripped up the wood and found that the frame itself was rusted underneath. And so they had to like cut out sections of the frame and redo that. We're not that. gonna worry about that. Easy for her to say. <laughs> so anyway, that, I'm not gonna lie, it does make me a little nervous. We um, were just about to start the show this morning and we came out here like 10 minutes before the show started and it's it's just so different how it feels in here with all the things pulled out and we just kind of like stood here for a minute looking around like, uh, it's this really interesting balance of like our dreams and our visions of it and then like crazy overwhelm. Yeah. Um, it was kind of neat though, you know, the more I pulled out, the more I can envision uh, what it's going to look like. But then there was also the reality of like, the more I ripped out, I was like, wow, this is a lot of work. I think a lot of people too don't realize the process. Like, you know, we plant, so our kind of timeline is like a goal, like an ideal perfect situation is that this could take six months. But everything I've read, everybody thinks tank however long you want and like double that. And like I was talking to somebody and they're like, I mean, that's like, like you could knock it out in a weekend or two, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, you know, we said we're renovating the Airstream and want to travel like your friend at work's like, why are you here? Like, uh, I mean, this wasn't like an overnight project, you know, yeah. so the yeah. amount of would... work. He thought after our first show that I was not going to show up to work on Monday, that we were going to be like done and like take off and hit the road or something. I was like, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for coming along our process. All yeah, right, it's going to be quite the journey. Yeah, so. It. You can't turn it around once it's live. What? No, that's all right. Okay. 
So this is the front area. So this is where some of the, the first fun was found. As you can see here, all of the staining on the wood is from water. Wait, we got Leaks. 10 minutes. 10 minutes, all right. All this wood here, you can see it's all kind of crumbly down there on the ground. Yeah, that's because it's rotted out. Awesome. It goes all the way around the front. Same thing over here. It's quite a bit rot. I mean, you can even see this guy right there. Holy moly, a hole right into the... That's bad, that's real bad. So we don't think we'll have to replace the whole subfloor. You can cut out sections. Come over here. Um, corner. But definitely this whole front board. Oh yeah, will need definitely to be coming out. And, and this where is... that came from is so if you remember from last week, the front bed was over here, and Tom said we woke up to being like rained on, right? So something in um, either this unit up here or these seals water was getting in and then dripping down through these window sills and leaking in here like all this was leaking so we know that mm -hmm. there's seals up here that are compromised that we're gonna have to pull off every window and redo all the ceiling and the cock in there before we put a new wood so we don't have to it's fine yeah that's fine this is the uh I'll show you that copper Hi, this is one of the main water lines right there. Pretty awesome, huh? Definitely uh, a place where water can escape from. Yeah. Uh, we got some more over here. Down in, by the shower was leaking a little bit. This, this whole bad boy toilet section, I haven't figured out how to get that out yet. So we'll, uh, we'll be working on wrenching that out. Okay. Maybe that... Part won't be salvageable and I'll just rip that sucker out. Break, I don't think it break a lot of things it. along I the mean, way. Maybe doors and mirrors. Yeah. But for the most part everything came out intact and not broken. So yeah. that's pretty so there's awesome. There's a lot Lots of people. Of to, I mean I've been so. in contact with like dozens of people that'll be using our parts to restore their airstream. So that's awesome. We're excited about that. So what's our next project, Tom? Like what is our you see what we did last in the last two weeks, what do we do next? Well, definitely need to get the bathroom stuff taken out. And then as soon as that's done, uh, I guess we could pull out all this floor. There's a whole lot of screws and nails. I don't know. Isn't Front. this fun? Look at this fun treasure we found under here. So before there was carpet, we had yeah. like nice 70s linoleum. Isn't that fun? Nice. I've loved all the like random things. Like they're just random pieces of trash, but oh, yeah. I've had so Here, much fun like finding them. Like the old... This was kind of neat actually. Ripping one of the... So this is one of the like doors, right? It would slide up and down for the storage compartment. If it was back there. Yeah. It's like Kmart-ish. Like 80s, 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 yeah, 80s, 90s. Newspaper ad that they Something. glued on the back. It's just been so fun kinda finding neat. even little trash. Like candy wrappers and bookmarks and the things that are like 70s 80s 90s like oh yeah random little like found treasures and things early 60s quarter I wonder if that's worth anything maybe we'll pay for the whole project a quarter yeah no oh. why not <laughs> some of those quarters are worth a lot of money man <laughs> You never know. It could be a rare thing, right? So this whole unit, too, this will be another project, but while we're in there and it's exposed, basically all of this needs to be um, completely replaced. So there's a lot going on in here. So this is um, like all the water stuff, the gas stuff, the furnace. Um, that's for sure... Yeah. You want to fit in one more story while we're yeah, in here? Yeah, this was about the uh, gas line that almost blew up our family when we were in Yellowstone. So, this heater right here, this is a gas heater, propane. This line connected to another one that went to that. And um, it was probably, what, 20 degrees that night. And so I was like, all right, let's kick on the heater. I tested it while we were still here at home, and it worked great. Kicked right on, warmed up nicely. Seemed to be just fine, so when we were out in Yellowstone, we figured it was going to be in the 20s overnight. Uh, let's get that heater going. So I kicked it on. Noah came in here and, and uh, hit the bed and was immediately sleeping. And I was in here for a couple minutes, you know, waiting for it to warm up. And I'm like, gosh, it really smells like propane. Like, I 
really bad. What is going on? And uh, and then my eyes like started burning uh, and uh, like tearing up and really hurting. I'm like, honey, you come come inside here for a second. Like, is this is this just me? Am I like do I have something in my eyes? And and then I probably freaked out. Oh yeah. I'm like, no, you're out of your mind. That's gas. Like, no, it's not. Just honey, is this okay? So I remove our poor sleeping kid out into the 20 degree night and then the whole thing remove like reeks of gas and we had to um open all the windows we did have it like closed and snug to try to like keep in the warmth of the daytime and then instead we had to like open everything oh, out yeah. and it was air nice it and out in here by that um, time too but toxic plus i mean shoot if you got one little spark this whole Thing could have probably blew and 50 to be feet fair everywhere. can I just like put this disclaimer that I said no we're not using it because we haven't tested and we don't even know if it works and we don't even know and I said if it's, it's fine. safe and we're not messing around with a gas line and he's like it's fine, it's fine. yeah it was not fine it was not fine See, so it, we, it only so works we... when I say it's gonna be fine that's the only time we'll be fine work yeah, that's usually true. <laughs> Gotten us into a lot of pickles for my it's fines. Um, but anyway, it works for me. we're not gonna talk about that right now. Um, but yeah, so then the next, so we opened up all the windows and aired this entire thing out, and then it was totally freezing inside. Good thing this lady packed like seven or eight blankets for every single person, so we stayed very warm. Uh, but we did wake up to frost on the insides of the windows and everything, so it was cold in here, but we were warm. Uh, so that said, the next morning, we kicked the stove on to make coffee, and you could hear a ch like that. That doesn't sound good. So this used to be the, the kitchen, you know, the island or whatever. I opened up the cabinets and went back up in there and kind of moved around the lines and realized, oh, the That's... line's broken. Like, gas is literally just pouring right on out. No wonder why it freaked yeah. so bad. No wonder. No wonder why we're being poisoned. So, anyway, this whole, all this, like, the whole system of yes, the Lonnie. propane. Yes, Lonnie, we do have a lot of work ahead of us. <laughs> it is very scary. <laughs> um, yeah, we gotta replace all that. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, hopefully... Um, after today's episode, you have an idea of what we have in store. Um, a lot of projects. We're going to take just one one rivet at a time, one panel at a time, one section of the board at a time, and um, it's going to be a grand adventure. A little more than a weekend project, but yeah. um, we're on it. What time is so it? I think it's time to be done. Time to be done. Show you here before we head out. Oh yeah, 10.28. We got two minutes. Show you my garage with everything packed in there it's it's lovely so airstream parts there is all of the couches the cushions the everything packed back so in there i'm working on connecting our pieces with people that need them and little things can be shipped so if you're watching this from anywhere around the country um we can ship some things, but all this big stuff, if anybody is in need in Colorado or any state near Colorado that's worth a road trip for, um, come on. Come on and take mm -hmm. some Airstream parts. Tom would love them out of his garage. My dirt bike back there. Going to uh, figure out a way to hitch that bad boy onto the back of the Airstream so we've got room in the back of the truck as we're traveling. So, so well, thanks for joining us. Um, Hope you have an idea of our projects and enjoy following along. We'll be excited to show you whatever we do this time for next episode. Yeah, and uh, do we have a Facebook page for this thing? or? No, we have an Instagram. We have an Instagram. So we're going to try to get that. Uh, we created a, a pretty sweet time-lapse video of ripping this whole thing out. So uh, we're going to condense that and get that thing posted on there. Yeah. And then RamonaTheAirstream.com will be live here pretty shortly too, so stay tuned. And we'll on Instagram, it's just Ramona the Airstream, so you can follow us on Ramona the Airstream. And then right here on the One TV every second and fourth Saturday, 9 Pacific time, um, join us to see our progress. So, thanks. All right. See you later, everybody. I don't know, I turned that off. <laughs>